Buckle up, movie nerds, because coronavirus might affect movie releases until 2024. What? Yeah, I know, I know, it's a really long time. Let's back up, let me explain. Since the start of the outbreak of COVID-19, we've been asked to practice social distancing, which is what I'm doing in my office right now. Unfortunately for movie theaters and other businesses that ask patrons to group together in tightly packed rooms, that is not a good thing. It's important to take the pandemic seriously, and movie studios generally have done that. So at first, they canceled red carpet premieres, and as it became clearer and clearer that we needed to all flatten the curve, they started descheduling theatrical releases and also completely shutting down production on movies and TV shows that are recording and filming right now. For a lot of standalone movies that are already in the can, like Disney's live action Mulan remake, for example, that can be really frustrating because we don't really know what's going to happen in the coming months. So no one has any idea when or how those movies might get released. The fact that this is a global pandemic also means studios have to take into consideration international markets and how they are able to or not able to attend theaters and see these movies. So it's a really big problem. Obviously not the most important problem happening right now, but it still is a problem. On top of that, there are also some massive cinematic universes that are looking at very bad log jams. Universal, for example, moved Fast and the Furious 9 from a theatrical release date of May this year to April 2nd, 2021, which just so happens to be the theatrical release date for Fast and the Furious 10, which has now been completely removed from the schedule, at least that we know of. So we may not see the 10th installment in the Fast and the Furious universe until spring of 2022 or later. Now, Disney, on the other hand, is probably tearing its hair out trying to figure out where all of the puzzle pieces for the Marvel Cinematic Universe should fall. Black Widow is a prequel movie, so it may not offer much in the way of new information for going forward in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but New Mutants was also delayed, and as we all know, The Eternals is slated for release this year in November. They've also shut down production on Falcon and the Winter Soldier. WandaVision had to move its production indoors to green screens to get some of its post-production done. I mean, all of the Disney Plus shows are supposedly going to tie in somehow to the larger MCU. So Falcon and the Winter Soldier is completely delayed indefinitely for production, and WandaVision has had some issues getting reshoots done and other aspects of production. So if there is anything that any of those shows or The New Mutants or Black Widow needs to say before The Eternals drops, we could be looking at a full six month push of Disney's entire MCU schedule, which stretches all the way to 2023 at this point. That's not even taking into consideration scheduling conflicts, which happen all the time in Hollywood. So you may see prominent directors, actors, writers walk away from roles they had committed to originally because they have committed to other projects in the future that they just can't make work at the same time. So this is sort of a, it's kind of a snowball effect, if you can see what I mean. Well, speaking of scheduling, most of these studios have release slates that go on for years, and they're planned well in advance. I just mentioned Disney's Marvel Cinematic Universe slate is planned all the way through the end of 2023 and probably into 2024 now. So this could really affect every single major studio in a big way. And it might also affect your pocketbook because what happens if we just need to play catch up and Hollywood decides let's release every superhero movie one weekend after another, after another, after another. I mean, your wallet is going to get really tired. And that means depressed box office for each one of those movies, which in turn then means we have a huge problem with potentially cutting production on future films. So we may see movies and studios, uh, you know, just decide they don't have the money to produce, uh, you know, a movie, or they may decide to go the safe route and only make sequels to things and maybe take less risks like The Eternals, for example, in the future, which 
sucks. You know, it's just not a good place to be in. It's, it's not fun at all for anybody. One of the worst victims of all of this is probably going to be indie films, which are generally the first block of movie genres to get axed from release slates because these studios pump hundreds of millions of dollars into these tentpole movies expecting an even bigger return. And if they don't get them, not only will they decide to fund less superhero movies, less blockbusters, they also don't have the money to fund smaller, more interesting indie stuff. So that really just hurts the studios, the industry, the people who work in the industry, and us as moviegoers. It's just nobody wins in this situation. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is gonna be just fine, but everybody really is just in a situation where this is not fun and it's not really a win for anybody. Nobody wins here, nobody wins. But we did think it was important to sort of talk it through with you guys and let you know what to expect as pop culture and entertainment consumers going forward in the next few years. So hopefully you found that informative. Take care of yourselves, take care of you know each other, wash your hands, and I'll see you next time.